Now, you're kind of on the forefront or we're on the forefront regarding time-restricted eating and fasting. Um, it used to be that that was considered, you know, quackery, but now it's kind of all the range. W what is the role of both time-restricted eating and outright fasting in the management of disease? Um, well, the first and most important thing is that our body heals itself and the anti-aging phenomenon and disease reversal benefits we get from dieting occurs when we're sleeping at night. Most repair occurs during sleep when we're not digesting food. Mm -hmm. It's the combination of being still and resting while we're not digesting that enhances cellular repair. So by eating late at night and a heavy meat dinner late at night, and we're digesting calories half the night while we're sleeping, inhibits or promotes aging and inhibits health cell repair. Mm -hmm. So time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting, I like to look at it as the most valuable part of that is eat means eat dinner earlier and don't overeat at dinner, almost so you could be a touch hungry at bedtime or certainly that you make sure that when you go to sleep at night, you don't feel you have to have a full stomach anymore. You know, make you if you can't eat light at night, make you a bigger meal for lunch if you have to. But you know, eat lightly at night or eat earlier at night. We generally serve dinner here around five o'clock, and even sometimes I overeat at night. I'm overeating and it because it tastes so good, and then I go to bed at night. I'm still feeling like I over. I said, oh shoot, I overate. I should be. I should really not. I should have finished digesting by now. I got to remember to eat. I got to try to eat less for dinner, and eat or eat earlier. You know what I mean? So you, if you overeat, it takes longer to digest it. So you can increase the hours of digestion by just putting too much food in your stomach at one time. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's why so, people they, so, they eat dinner and they're not even hungry for dinner because they eat too much at lunch. If mm -hmm. you eat too much at breakfast, you're not going to be hungry. If you want to eat three meals a day, you have to not overeat so you can get hungry in time and have your stomach be totally empty and feel like eating the next meal. But particularly at dinner time is critically important. Mm -hmm. And so. Yes, fasting and intermittent fasting has benefits for longevity, just like caloric restriction does. But I generally don't recommend it too much because I'm dealing with overweight food addicts so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by and if they're still overweight, we're trying to fast weight off them instead of learning them learning how to live the lifestyle. It makes them more emotionally obsessed about food. It actually triggers addictive behaviors. It doesn't help it. And even though you might have accelerated the weight loss a little bit, they're going to get a slow metabolic rate that's extremely too slow after the fast, and they'll gain weight too readily. And they're not even going to want to stick with the program after the fast. So it more it, it complicates things and makes too high a risk of weight yo-yoing mm -hmm. and lack and less chance they're going to stay consistent on the program long term. So I don't recommend that. But right now I'm fasting a person because she's eating healthfully, and her psoriasis was so bad and so itchy. But I just felt I wanted to clear the psoriasis faster so she could be more comfortable. And she wasn't that overweight anyway. So I started her after about a couple of months of eating right, and her psoriasis wasn't yet going away yet. So I started her on a fast this week, and immediately it's clearing up her psoriasis. And so um, so there are so I'm sometimes going to fast people as a therapeutic modality. Like they particularly use it with asthmatics, because once they eat healthfully for six months. And I want to slowly wean them off their steroids. I want to make sure as they come off their steroids, they don't flare up again and have an attack. So I start them on a brief fast to lower the, to reduce the propensity for an immune hyperactivation. So their asthma is clear and there's no reaction while they're staying off the steroids for the next, you know, so they're going to fast a week or two and then they're going to go back to eating and I can make sure they're never going to have another asthma attack the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. You know, so I can use, it in my arse, my tool bag of arsenal of of natural remedies, but I but I don't want to overuse it either. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's it's for you. It's more of an anti-inflammatory strategy rather than a weight loss strategy. Correct. Yeah. I do not re recommend using it for a weight loss strategy. 